So you guys remember the FAA and you remember the C-band issues with the radio altimeters for planes and aircraft? Apparently that is still a thing. That is still going to be an issue in the near term. There are some things that are probably coming our way that are going to cause some contention. And there's going to be some headbutting between the FAA airline operators and the mobile network operators that have licenses and want to broadcast the 3.7 gigahertz frequency, the C-band, and the 77. All right, this actually just developing within the last day here. Uh, this is from readers. All right, the carriers want to like build out this this network. They paid a lot of money for the spectrum. The spectrum auction itself generated somewhere between about eighty, you know, billion dollars. And I think you know, with closing, uh, clearing, and repacking and stuff from satellite, probably exceeds a hundred billion. Uh, they want to turn up the power and they want to start putting the gear, the radios, the antennas on more sites that are very close to the to airports. And the reason they want to do that is because those areas need the capacity. People get off and board planes and they take their phones with them and they use them when they're at the airport. And uh, they want to start boosting the signal. They want to start turning up power. They want to start installing and hanging more antennas and radios by the airports. All right, so uh, the U.S. FAA on Wednesday urged chief executives of major U.S. airlines to move quickly to address risks from a 5G wireless rollout. We know about that. All right, AT&T and Verizon want to boost C-band 5G services around airports starting in July, uh, even though they were previously delayed. All right, so that was a very good, smart, political move by the carriers, AT&T and Verizon, to play nicely. What they did was they they backed down a bit. They reduced the rollout. They limited the number of sites around the airport. They used what's called a buffer zone where they stayed away from the airports by about, I don't know, six, seven, eight miles maybe in some instances. But since then, a lot of those buffer zones have shrunken. Uh, they've gone from like six, seven, eight miles. Now they're down to like two, three, four miles. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to reach around the airports without any risk to the aircraft. And it has seemed to work out pretty nicely. Now, in the meanwhile, what exactly have airline operators done to deal with the issue, which is their radio altimeters, some of them being quite old, and some of these airplanes not really being future ready to deal with interference issues with the frequency that the carriers want to use for that uh, N77 C-band? Well, they haven't done anything. Uh, less capable aircraft here in quotes are still going to require altimeter retrofits. These retrofits that they're talking about are filters that will kind of help reduce the impacts and mitigate the issues that they could have with interference to, to make sure that the signals don't affect the hardware that they use for landing and grounding planes. All right, the altimeters that are used run on radar in that near frequency, I think like 4.4 gigahertz. And um, because they're so old, because they're so outdated, they're not effectively able to, you know, distinguish frequencies and uh, could be potentially an issue. Now, yet and still, we, we have not seen proof that the interference risk is there. Uh, but regardless, you don't want to play around with these sites of things. I mean, planes and people, right? Uh, but what exactly have they done? Nothing. And the, um, the FAA commissioner here, uh, well, I should say, um, what, did the, what was ex his executive title here? The FAA administrator, Billy Nolan, is telling airline operators to go ahead and get those things done, uh, which means they haven't done anything up to this point. But there are a couple of things that are important to note. Uh, they need an aggressive schedule to necessitate the completion of retrofits for the third and largest group in 2023. Uh, the The thing about this, the C-band is both Verizon and AT&T are doing this very fast. And then starting next year, you're probably going to start to see T-Mobile getting in on this because their licenses are going to clear for the next set of blocks, right? So like right now, it's it's block A of C-band, which is the lowest frequency. Then you have blocks B and C, which are a little bit higher, and then those clear next year. So th this problem isn't going away. There still needs to be a fix. And then uh, something interesting that I found here, and this one is from uh, David Shepardson, and I, I 
where was this? Um, this letter here dated from June 14th, in which uh, this letter indicates what has happened over the last six, seven months. All right, conveying urgency with the aviation industry must treat the installation of radio frequency filters on radio altimeters throughout their fleet. Verizon AT&T committed in January to a number of voluntary mitigations, including turning off hundreds of wireless transmitters for a period of six months. That, if you guys remember, dates back to like December, January, where Verizon and AT&T just willingly said, okay, fine. We'll turn off these transmitters at the airport. So like literally Verizon and AT&T have airports with gear for this frequency spectrum that has been off and they have not been broadcasting because of these fears. So they have played nice. But these the six-month period that they agreed to, it's coming up here, July 5th, 2022. And what have these airline operators done? They have done nothing. They have not upgraded their aircraft with new altimeters or filters to deal with the issues. So AT&T and Verizon were smart. They did the the best thing from a political standpoint. They said, "Fine. We'll play nicely. We're going to we're going to wait this out, but at some point you guys got to get things done on your side." And looks like the aviation industry has not done that. So uh this continues to be an issue. Uh this is not good. Uh but I will say that I think things are looking good for the carriers. And things are looking bad for the airline operators. They're just, I think they're just lollygagging. I think they're just wasting time hoping that there will be a bailout coming from somewhere, whether it's a bailout from the government or whether it's a bailout from the carriers. They're not getting a bailout from the carriers. The carriers are raising prices. Uh, the carriers are spending billions of dollars to build out this network and buy the spectrum. They're, they don't owe them anything. Uh, the FCC, again, is going to have to deal with this. Um, the Department of Transportation has gotten involved on this in the past. They'll probably get involved again. So you'll be seeing the name like Peter Buttigieg and, and others involved here. Uh, but this, again, continues to be a point of contention. This is painful, annoying, frustrating. And to somebody who likes and appreciates capacitive connectivity uh, on my cell phone, wherever I go, uh, this continues to bother me. Uh, but it's, it's the political situation we're in these days. This is a total reach. It's it's just a charade at this point. You can see that the, the FAA here, in this instance, uh, trying to get airline operators on board, and, and they're, just, they're just the worst. This is terrible. And this is why we are behind in 5G. So not only did our FCC put us behind with the auctions coming in late, uh, now go ahead and throw this in. And at this point, it's not really the FCC's fault. They're doing their part. They did their thing, all the studies, all the clearance. Uh, now it's just bad politics, in my estimation. Uh, comment down below your thoughts and opinions. You all the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard. How long do you think this is going to drag on? How bad do you think this is going to get? I can't wait. We're, we're literally like three, four weeks away from this hitting, uh, coming to a T. All right. Uh, like, share, subscribe for more. Turn on the bell notifications icon to never miss an upload. Links in the description for my Twitter. And my Patreon page, support us there and get early access to content and exclusive videos not found anywhere else. Also, business inquiries you can send to the Gmail address in the description box. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.